our pressure points for the sinuses. We are then going to be going over sections in the form where we will be doing raking motions, both to the side and when we do them in front. These are things that we haven't gone over that much lately. We have, however, been going over our balance work, doing our C shape and where that's going to go. We've also been working on having the chi ball and going around our bodies, both directions, big loops and small loops, and then how we sway side to side with that. We're going to be working more on our movements that are stepping to the side and moving the chi and working with our legs today. So just make sure that you have enough space to either side, front and back, so that you can do that. We'll be doing a little bit of hands above the head today, so if your shoulders are a little sore from moving all that snow, then maybe you won't want to put your hands all the way up, which is fine. You can still send your chi in the same direction and your body's going to do it. So because we've been dealing with lots of changes in weather, our bodies need to do different things. Sometimes in the winter we become really stuffed in our sinuses or things don't want to work very well. We sometimes get a little tightness behind the skull right where these um, neck and the skull meet. We're going to work on getting that and some of our sinus and lymph node drainage to happen in the morning. So this is something that you can do daily. So let's begin with that as part of our warm ups. First, let's warm up some of our joints and then we will get into some of the pressure points and massage work in our Qigong. When you're ready, bring your hands together and rub them. I'm gonna take care of the eyes first. We're gonna slowly close the eyes, letting the eyes be drawn. We're gonna place the palm of the hand over the cheekbone and gently cup over the eye, softly, softly cupping. And then with the eyes drawn, you're going to start to look up and down softly with the eyes inside the socket. Let the lids be drawn still. Eyes are closed. Feel your breath come in and out. Continuing to do this a little bit longer. Keep breathing in and out. Let the eyes come to the center. Now you're going to move the eyes inside their socket side to side. Feeling the breath come deep into the belly. Let the eyes pause in the middle. Look all the way up. Start to draw a circle around the sockets, round and around. Go the other way. Notice where there's some tension. You can return to this later on your own time on which one needs more help. Let your eyes come to center. Keep your hands over your eyes as you slowly open the lids, staring at the palms very closely. We're gonna slowly start to remove the hands from the eyes, but don't go too fast because we need our eyes to adjust to light. And we're also allowing our focus to adjust slowly. So right now it's watching the palms as they slowly move away. Your eyes are literally changing the position in their sockets as they focus. And as you get further and further away, your eyes change position in their socket. Then let your hands come down. Blink a few times. Take a few breaths in and out. Feel the lungs move, feel the diaphragm move. Take the dantians and let them move, lower dantian, middle dantian, even upper. Imagine that you can breathe through each dantian the front body, the back body, even the sides of the body breathe through the dantians, letting all of the 
frustrations and worries begin to melt away. It's just you and your sacred Tai Chi and Qigong space. Feeling the earth below and the sky above, all the elements around you. Let your tailbone slowly guide itself down towards your heels, towards the earth like a root. Slowly drawing the lower part of your abdominal muscles in and up slightly to support your lower spine so it's a counterweight. Your tailbone going down and your navel slightly lifting up. Rolling the shoulders back and down a few times. Breathe in and out. Let the elbows follow along. Even the simple movement can cause your sinuses to start to drain. It's because we're pumping some of the lymph nodes and glands that are along the neck and near where the arm and the torso meet. All right, pause. We're gonna bring those hands together like an Andhala Mudra, like in prayer hands. We're gonna go side to side, massaging our hands, breathe in and out. Let the forehead be relaxed. The hands relax in the center. Separate the hands, and then we're gonna point the fingertips down so the tops of the hands can meet. Letting the wrists come closer together. Everyone's gonna to be different on the flexibility that their body has in the range of motion. So just go to what feels right and feels comfortable for you. You can take the elbows down, or you can lift the wrists up and do a combination of them. Good, let those hands roll apart. Bring the hands and prayer hands again. And this time we're gonna take the heels of the hands down, letting the elbows come out. Good. Let those hands relax, roll the shoulders back. Let the hands come behind you gently. Rolling the shoulders back and taking the elbows towards each other and take the hands down. You can hold opposing hands, opposing wrists, even opposing elbows, whichever feels better to you. And we're gonna lift those arms away, squeeze the elbows in, rolling the shoulders back, lifting. You can lift as high as what feels right to you. And if you want, you can roll your palms towards the room behind you, take your tailbone down, bend your knees even if you need. Let the hands come down and relax. Shake them out slowly. Good. Wiggle the fingers. And let's continue to open up the bottom half of our body. Slowly tick tock the hips, bend and unbend your knees, helping to elongate through our hips. Right now we're getting all of our circulatory system and our nervous systems to work with us. See if you can really drop the one hand down and then the other. The next time you drop down a hand, look to the opposite shoulder. Open and close the mouth. Return to the center and do that the other way. Good, return to center one more time on that second side. If you want, you can take that upper arm all the way up towards the sky. Maybe you drape it over. Look towards the floor and then center everything back up. The arm that was up in the air is probably gonna feel like a whoosh of circulation coming through, even nerve function. So let's do the other one.
When you're ready, come back up. Roll the shoulders back and down. Shake out the arms. Wiggle the fingers and roll those wrists. Good. All right, we're gonna continue to go down. We're gonna roll one ankle. You can leave the foot on the floor or you can lift, whichever one works for you. Go both directions. Wiggle the toes. Point and flex. You can add the knee with it or make it separate. And when you're ready, other side. You can keep the ball of the foot on the floor. You can keep the foot on the floor if you so choose. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Wiggle the toes, crunch and release and then point and flex. All right, let that foot come down. We'll return to opening up more of our body through our stretches, but first let's do a little bit of our massage for our sinuses and clarity of thinking. So we're going to first bring our fingertips and we're gonna be very, very soft. We're just gonna use the two first fingers you can do your fingers like our lightning fingers or like um, some of our mudras that we've gone over, or you can let your hands relax. You don't have to be holding them. We're gonna slowly bring those fingers just underneath the jawline, right behind the ear. There's a little golly between your jaw and your neck and your cranium. We're going to bring those fingers and slowly glide down very softly, just like if you were doing this along um, a baby's leg or a kitten or a puppy. You don't want to press too hard. Very soft going down towards the jaw and then along towards the chin. You might feel little lumps, especially right past the curve of the jaw. You might feel a little lump there on both sides. That is a section of lymph nodes. If you know that you shouldn't mess with your lymph nodes, like if you have lymphedemia or anything like that, then you've already been advised. You, you probably already know what you can and cannot do. For some that have those types of medical conditions, you already know the type of massage that's best for you. So do what feels right. And then that same spot, now we're gonna go down towards our shoulders. You'll feel there's um, like a ropey tendon that goes down. That's what we're following. And there's a little, another little valley between the esophagus. You can feel that pipe-like esophagus and then this big ropey tendon. We're kind of going right in between those. I tend to keep one finger along the tendon. I know some people that keep their finger on their esophagus. I just don't like how that feels personally. So I tend to use the tendon. You may also feel some lymph nodes that are a little bigger here. I tend to have one that if I'm getting sick, it's about a silver dollar size to a quarter. That will be there. You can do more fingers if you want. You can do all your fingers if you'd like. We're not pulling really hard. We're not pulling on the skin so that it's gonna be taut and we're not doing it to the pressure where there's gonna be red marks. It's more just a soft, silky line down. Then we're going to take our palms and we're going to press the middle finger closer just behind that ear and we're going to make waves, very soft wave motion, about every two to three seconds. Very soft. You may need to swallow a few times, that's all right. It means it's working. You may even need to clear your throat. All right, pause from that for a moment. And we're going to take crossed fingers or crossed arms and gently massage from the shoulder down towards the sternum. There's some lymph nodes here. We're just making sure that nothing gets stuck because we're having it travel down. Go along the collarbone. And then go above the collarbone. 
pause, let the arms drop, shake them out, and then we'll bring those hands back up. Now we're going to do along the face. We have pressure points along our brow line, and we're gonna take our thumb and our forefinger. You can either do two fingers, you can do a finger and a thumb, and then the two fingers up here. You can do fingers on each hand. It's a preference. I've done, I do all of them, it just depends on what I do that day. But to show you for clarity, I'm going to do a thumb and a finger from both. Using the thumb or the finger right below the brow, right where the socket comes to meet into the bridge of the nose and the curvature of the brow, not the brow line, but the actual brow of the socket. That's where we're going to, I'm gonna take my thumb and gently press in, and then the finger goes right above. You, if you're very, very soft and you're not pressing in yet, you may even feel a slight pulse through a vein there. You're right in the correct spot then. Softly holding and a gentle pinch just a little bit and then pull out. Pinch and pull. Keep breathing in and out. So I'm just gonna change my hand position so you know what other ways you can do. You don't have to change them with me. This helps with headaches, especially sinus related ones. All right, if you do start to get a sinus headache that's really, really strong and the massage isn't working, you can hold those points for a longer period of time. Take about three to five deep inhalations and full exhalations when you do that as you hold those points and then release. And you may even feel that whoosh come around the skull as you, it's kind of like holding the dam back and then you let go of the dam and it's gonna help clear the stuff there. Then we come to just at the other edge of the sockets, right along the temple line. And we're gonna gently pull up, up. You may notice whenever you have a tension headache, you tend to do that naturally. You wanna rub the temple. So we're gonna go all the way around the temple now come to the outside of the temple. But we're massaging towards the eyes. And then we come to the top of the temple. You'll feel that there's two bones that meet along a crevice here. Take your fingers up and down that little crevice, coming down towards the temple. Keep breathing in and out. Good. Now we take our fingers towards our hairline. There's a pressure point and you, even if you um, no longer have a hairline, you can find where there's almost like a little pulse just up there. And there's usually like um, a, a place where the skull bones actually meld together. We have several of them. It's like a map on our head. And for me, mine is a diagonal line. Some people have a straight, some people have a diagonal the other direction. You'll find that little fusion. And then I have another one that starts right up here. So that's where I'm going to rub. Yours may be completely different because we have the same pieces of our skulls, but where they fuse is going to be a little different for each person. So we're just going to rub side to side on them and then up and down, side to side, up and down and then glide all the way down towards the temples, down along the jaw. Bring the thumbs underneath the jaw and in the side you'll feel your tongue moving. That's fine, let your tongue be relaxed. We're literally massaging the underneath of our tongue and all of those lymph nodes. Now we go to the back of the head. So what we're gonna do back here, and we've gone over this before, is we're actually gonna use those bulbous points at the back of the skull, and then there's that little divot, the gateway. 
It's part of your eighth chakra. You're gonna bring your fingertips right in that area and drag down and out, down and out. Breathing in and out slowly. And then come down a little further underneath the skull line where we've done tapping before. Good. Come back down the neck with those hands, but now we're going to the back side. Rub a little bit of where the shoulders and the neck meet. Good. And then once again, you can do one hand or you do both. I tend to do both. But if you want to be more relaxed, if your pectorals are really tight, let's say you did a lot of shoveling or, or something, you can let one relax and you just slowly do waves coming in. When you go really deep into your lymph nodes here, which you can do even with tapping, and there are different techniques in Qigong. One is where you make almost a C shape with your hand and you come in and out through all of those lymph nodes. We have several lymph nodes here, and you can do that. You can drag from underneath, depending on the lymph nodes that your body needs to work with. Now, of course, as I said before, if you have lymph issues and gland issues, you know the proper massages that you're supposed to do. So if you're not supposed to do these, please don't do them. You know what you're supposed to work with. All right, then we come down to our belly because we have all these lymph nodes that are in the pockets. We'll get to our ones that are sternum in a moment. We have several around the belly. All right, now we're gonna come to our sternum. We've tapped there a lot. This time we're going to massage. We're gonna press in and pull out. Press in, pull out right along that sternum, sternum and thymus area. So it's not getting into the muscles. We're literally rubbing that very center piece of our rib cage. Good. Now go back to the belly and rub in circles. Doesn't matter what your circles are. You're going to do both directions if that feels right. If you tend to feel like you're getting a little nauseous or something, because sometimes that can happen with your lymph nodes, do where you look down and you do clockwise. Good. And one more thing to help everything sort of flush out, we're gonna bring those hands to our sacrum area. And you can't quite see where my sacrum is because I have the, the sound box here. So I'm gonna kind of wiggle my fingers underneath there, but we pull out. So here are the sticky outy hip, top of the hips. And then there's a triangle shaped bone, which is called the sacrum. And then our tailbone is just below that. You wanna rub that sacrum, get those fingers into all those little grooves and pull out to the sides. And then come just above the hips and rub along there. Good. All right. And then let those arms drop down and shake them out. There are even more that you can do that are along the legs, the feet, even within the hands that help with your sinuses and with dealing um, with the humidity changes in the air during the winter and seasonal changes. You can also look those up. You can look for acupressure points online. You can also look up Qigong and Tai Chi, even yoga, massage, and mudras for sinus issues and winter effect. Now let's get into our Tai Chi movements. One of the things we are going to be working on is the raking aspect in our form. We'll go over a little bit of the other stuff in a, minute, in a moment, but first let's go over raking. We're gonna be doing two different forms of raking. One will be when we lift our hands up and we come forward making a big wheel shape. So we're gonna go over that one first. Then the other one is where we're stepping in more grander motions. We're gonna skim across, kind of like you're skimming across the top of water. 
just barely touching. So let's first do the one we were, where we are standing and our hands are gonna come in front. This is actually gonna be part of our closing of the form. Standing in your mountain stance, in your horse stance, legs separated, feet are parallel to each other or slightly out in your 45 degree angle. Allow your tailbone to go down, drawing the navel in and up, creating that balanced pelvis. So we're not gut butting it and we're also not over tucking. We're letting everything be nice and neutral. Breathe in and out. And let's raise the earth to begin with. Inhale, raise the earth. Exhale, lower the earth down. Breathing in, up into the heart. And breathing out and down. Start to visualize, sense, or feel your chi pumping up through your feet, through the soles of the feet into your heart and your palms, and then you're pressing it back down. Fingers are relaxed. Let yourself rock on your feet, massaging the feet. Knees can be bent, rock to the heels, and then rock to the toes. Breathe in and out. Your body is working on its balancing, as well as strengthening. Breathe in. Breathe out. All right. Now we're going to practice our raking. Bring the earth up, and we're going to push the mountain. But instead of bringing the energy back, we're going to keep the fingers nice and open, palms are facing out, and we're going to slowly let those fingertips start to arc. Let them come down, raise the earth. Exhale out. Good. Do it a few more times. Again, imagining the earth coming up and then out. This time, imagine the earth coming up and the sky coming down, meeting at the heart, and then coming out through your hands. As you make this ball shape in front of you, a wheel. Bring all of that into your heart, and this time we're going to reverse it. Push the earth down, and we're going to let the fingers be really gentle, let the wrists lead, and then rock back. Very similar to pulling the blanket, which we'll be going over in a little bit. Let yourself rock as you start to feel this today. Move with the chi in your body, letting the rest of the world float away. It's just you and the elements. When you're ready, we're going to reverse that again, raising it up. Let's reverse it. Notice how the energy shifts within you, how your chi changes. It might be subtle. Maybe today you're not feeling it, that's okay. You're allowing the channels to at least start to open for you. Breathe in and out. Good, and let the hands relax.
that's part of our closing at the very end. You can feel how it starts to combine things and make things almost feel like they're linking together, they're syncing up. Kind of like when you're syncing your phone and your computer together, things are going to start to link and come together. That's why it's at the end. It helps everything that you've done throughout the form come together. To go over the next section of our raking, I first want to warm up our legs a little bit because we are going to be doing more of our lower back and our leg movements in this. So one of the things that we do in this movement is we actually step out to the side a little bit. You can draw your box going forward and out, or you can just go diagonally over. You want your feet to try to start to point the same direction. They don't have to absolutely point the same direction, but they're going to head that direction. Let your tailbone drop down, and then we're going to bend and unbend the front knee. Let the back knee be unbent for right now. Your tailbone is like an anchor. Tailbone goes down, shifting the weight, and then shift back. So as you can tell, my torso is not moving. It is literally the knee. For knee comfort, line the middle of the knee towards second and third toe as you bend it. That's going to help the muscles and the tendons learn how to support your knee joint without causing pain. Good, this front leg, now we're going to unbend the knee and bring the toes up. Tailbone still going down. Good. Now we're going to let those toes come up and we're going to turn our heart towards our back leg. Let it return to the center and foot comes down. Good. Now let's let our right hand, since my left foot is in front, if you're the opposite, that's fine. Whatever hand is in the back is going to lift up. So we're going to come up and let that hand hook behind a little bit and then down. Tailbone follows this time. Tailbone's following the hand up in the air and down. Let's try it again. Good. Slowly move that foot back to the center. And let's do the other side. You'll feel that part of each leg is more open than the other part. So mine is usually inner thigh on the back leg and more of the back and top part of the leg that was in front. So now let's do the other side. So first we bend and unbend the knee. Tailbone drops down, taking the shin towards the second and third toe. You don't have to be in a really wide, wide stance. If it feels like your balance is a little off, step wider. So instead of one railroad tie, be on two. Let your tailbone come straight down. Good. Now we're going to start to lift the front toe. Still, our torso is nice and still, staying neutral. All right, now let's let our torso turn and come back. Turn and come back. Let the back arm float up and forward. All right, you ready? Pause, toe, heel, or make small steps to come back. Take one foot and step in front so that you're going forward, bend both knees and scoop your tailbone forward and back a few times, moving in your pelvis. We're just warming up and move back and do the other leg. Bend your knees a little bit Pelvis moves forward and back. 
It's not a jutting of the forward, your tailbone is scooping forward and then your tailbone swoops to neutral. Good. When you're ready, come to your neutral stance, your horse stance. If it feels like your lower back needs some work, bend your knees, slowly slide down. Maybe you let your elbows rest on your knees. You can be in a catcher's stance, tailbone drops down, navel in. Or you can even come into a forward fold or a partial forward fold. Maybe you rock towards the toes and then back towards the heels. Take your tailbone down, bend your knees, hands and elbows come up to the knees. And slowly come up, letting your blood pressure ease and balance. All right. So with those leg movements, we also move our chi ball. And one of the things that we have worked on is as we step, we move the chi ball from one hip to the front knee and back. Then we progress. Then we pull the blanket over and we push it off. So we're gonna build on that. After we push the blanket off, our palms face the earth, and we're going to do raking to the side. Our hands skim, our torso moves with us, and then our feet start to turn slowly towards the back. You can use the balls of the feet or the heels of the feet. So that was the balls of the feet, this is the heels. You can do a combination If it feels like you need to do it in pieces, move a foot, move a foot, go ahead and do that. All right, let's do the other leg. We step forward and out. The chi ball on the hip, move it to the knee. Move it back. This time the toes are gonna come up as we unbend that knee and we're gonna hook. Blanket. Rake. Find which way works for you. Is it the balls of the feet, the heels, one of each? You need to move one foot, then the other, then back and forth. Good. Return to the middle. Roll your shoulders back. Tick tock your hips. All right. Let's add all of those movements together now. We would have brought the chi up. We're in our horse stance. We're bringing it into our lower dantian. We look to the left. We begin to move, letting our weight come to the right foot. As we start to move our left foot, it does not have to be a huge step. It can be little. It can be less than a foot away. We take that chi from our right hip and we now follow the distance of our knee. Bring it back. All right, now those toes come up and your back hand hooks behind you. Pull that chi ball apart, stretching it out, and then push it back in. Watch as this left 
hand is supporting the ball and the right hand is pulling that dough apart. Good, then everything comes forward. This is where we're gonna lift up that blanket, toes come up, throw the blanket off. Torso is still neutral. I'm not leaning forward. I'm not reaching. I'm pressing. Right now we're going to rake. Palms come down. We slowly turn to the other side. You don't have to pivot your feet all the way. And step to the middle. Gather the chi, other direction. Just moving back and forth, let's do this three times. All right, now we're gonna do the hook, front, Feet unbend, and then bring it back down. One more. Blanket. Tailbone stays going down the whole time. When you bring the blanket up overhead, the tailbone goes forward. Throw the blanket off. Rake. And return to the middle. And down. Feel the breath move in and out of the body. Good. Let's work on one balancer and then we'll do this again and then we'll go over the closing again. Let's do crane in flight. So this is near the beginning. Slight horse stance. Tailbone goes down. Bending your knees, pushing the shins forward. We're bringing the chi up along our body, bringing that chi ball into our low dantian, lifting left foot first. Remember, you can leave the feet on the floor. Other side. Let's do it again. First side. Second side. Good. We're going to skip some of the stuff that we do and come right into lifting and stepping out. Push the chi. Pull it back. Push the chi, pull it back. Push the chi, now we're gonna do the hook. And 
blanket. You turn into the middle, other side. and moving the blanket. center. Now that forward wheel coming in, pushing out, and raking the fingers down. Reverse it. Letting the feet step together, letting the palms float up, and exhales we close. Standing in open position, tailbone down, feel what the body's doing. Let the eyes be relaxed. The crown of the head is expanding, opening more, allowing the chi to come down from the sky through the center channel, all the way down to the soles of the feet. spreading out along the soles of the feet, out in a circle around the body, and then it flows up along the sides and back into the crown and down. And then starting to reverse that, bringing up from the earth through the center channel, out of the crown and spilling over the side going around the body, back into the earth, and then continuing up the leg through the center channel. Feeling the breath expand the lower dantian around the navel, expanding it out like a cone, 
through the front and back body, through the sides of the body. Letting the middle dantian do the same, opening the front and back sides of the body. Dantian, the third eye and crown area to open up. Letting yourself become aware of the surfaces beneath you, the sky above. If you'd like to sit down for the little bit of meditation that we're going to do, then go ahead. If you'd like to stay standing, go ahead. I'm going to stay in a mild horse stance, tailbone down personally. That is what feels right for me. Feeling the breath move in and out of the low dantian. Let your eyes be gently soft or let them be open, but they're gazing at something as if you're not focusing on anything at all. A drishi gaze. Soft eye. Feeling the breath move in and out. And imagine that you can breathe in and out through your third eye, the center of the upper dantian. And you're breathing in clear, pure breath, air, energy, chi, whatever that looks like to you as it comes in through the third eye and back into the pineal glands, the center of the brain. As you breathe out, it leaves just as it came. You may notice as it leaves, it's not as bright as it was when it came in. So we're going to continue to come in and fill that space in the brain and exhale whatever doesn't serve your brain, your mind. Until it almost is the same color or is just as clean as what was coming in. Everything that's exiting is being transmuted back into positive, back into clear, throat be relaxed, the eyes are soft, the breath is gentle. Some visualize this as steam, smoke, or like clouds, mist. Some see it as sparkles, beams of light. There's no right or wrong. Next time you inhale in and bring that chi into the brain, fill your lungs and your bellows up. Pause for a few seconds. And as you exhale, instead of letting that breath come out through the third eye, let it expand through the brain, through the skull, and out. Try it again. This time, breathe in through the upper dantian, in the middle dantian, so into the heart area and through the third eye to the very core of them. Exhale out. A few more times. Breathe in and out through the back of those dantians, all the sides of the dantian. Yeah. 
Now try adding the lower Dantian to the mix. Eyes are still relaxed, throat and neck are soft and relaxed. Breathing is easy. slowly open, adjusting to the light. And your hands come up in front of your middle Dantian. Soft right hand meets a long left hand. bowing as we thank everyone that's ever studied and practiced these things before us presently and who will come. Thank you for joining me for Tai Chi Qigong. My name is Haley and I have the business called Sacred Lotus Heart. You may receive emails from me from time to time updating you on things that are going on energetically with our chi and with our classes. Don't forget that we also have a YouTube channel where you can access many of these classes and forms on there for free. And there's also chair yoga, meditations, and more. Thank you to the Cook and Aspen Libraries for providing these classes for us. We all greatly need them and we thank you very much for providing these. If you'd like to contact me privately to dive in deeper into your Tai Chi and Qigong practice and the healing arts of them, feel free to go to my website, sacredlotusheart.com and contact me through there. You can also see what other classes I'm offering to see if any of them work for you and if it's something that you'd like to add. Does anyone have any questions about today's practice, other practices that we've done together, and or your own practice? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or you can write in the chat box. Today we worked on things for our sinuses and our lymph nodes, balancing with the winter weather and all the influxes. Then we went over the ending of our form that we've been working on and also raking both doing the wheel in front and off to the side i'm glad that you guys were liking the massages this morning <laughs> um, we don't do the split screen throughout the whole class because there are times that you would not be able to see the full um, movements. So there are times that we need to not have the split screen because the split screen cannot show the feet and it's very narrowed so it will not be able to be on the whole time. There are times that as we start to put the full form together I will do it in different directions. I'll do it where I'm facing the camera for our first round. Then I'll do it at an angle and then I'll do behind and when it seems fitting to be able to have the split screen then we'll do that. But for right now we go off and on so that we can see the full frame for our learning. Um, I see some people had their own technological issues of not seeing anything and, quite in, and cutting in um, quite a bit. Uh, did anyone else, just for our own sake, did anyone else happen to have um, a blank screen at all today, or um, a lot of jitter or cutting in and out. Uh, was it sound? Was it audio? Was it, um, what I mean by audio, was it me? Was it the sound as in the music, or was it the video? We are always trying to, uh, yes, jittery through the whole class. Did anyone else have that besides Donna? 
and a niece. Um, because we we have devices here that are not host that are also watching and we didn't notice anything but um, we are also on our own internet here that's not in a very um, populated area and the more you get into populated areas I know this from being in Mundelein there are times that my feed of receiving somebody else's Zoom or even my putting it out there can be a little weird depending on my internet. So that's why I'm asking just to know if it was our system or if it was the internet, which unfortunately I can't control. I wish I could. Um, yes, we have a question. Uh, no movement, okay. So, um, if it was a majority, please let me know. And you can also let me know privately if you don't want to here, just so that we can work on things. But unfortunately, if it was on your own end with your own internet and your own connection, I can't do anything. I'm sorry. I wish I could. I wish I could wave a magic wand and it'd be perfect for everybody and, and you know, high def for everybody. <laughs> it comes in and out. Um, did anyone have any questions about today's practice and or your own practice? Or anything that we've worked on before. I have a question, Haley. Yes. On, when we go into the email to click on the link, there's a calendar. And I noticed that the last class is the end of the month. Is it still going to be like that? When you go into the email, oh, the email sent from Zoom. Sorry, I had to think which email you were talking about. It's been a while since I've seen those. <laughs> um, so the end of the month is the end of the winter season. We are supposed to be continuing. We have not confirmed with the library because the library is kind enough to sponsor these. We're always looking for sponsors for the classes to keep them going for the community. But right now the library is sponsoring the yoga and the Tai Chi. Um, nothing has been confirmed with me if we are continuing. So um, I will be checking in. They have to go through all of their boards to make sure that we can continue unless they get a sponsor. So um, meditation, we do have a sponsor, which is Spring of Vernon Hills, I almost said Valley, of Vernon Hills. They're kind enough to sponsor all the meditation. Um, so the reason why the calendar shows that is that this is the end of the winter season and then we'll be going into the spring. So when I get the okay, then that'll be opened up for the next season. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Sometimes it feels like I'm passing the chi to another person and they hand it back to me when we do passing chi to the sides. Um, which to the sides do you mean, Joanne? Do you mean when we are stepping and passing it? Or is it when we're pushing out to the sides at any time or forward? Um, stepping to the side. Stepping, stepping to, to the, the side. side. It, it almost feels like you're passing a ball back and forth between... Yes. A person. <laughs> and that's what the chi is doing, only instead of a person, instead of a single being, it's sort of like you're passing it to all the elements and all of the chi in the environment around you and within the universe. So you're passing what's building in in you, you're passing it out and you're gathering a connection of both your own and that of everything around you and bringing it back in. So you're, you're moving it, you're energizing it, you're also clearing it and then you're passing it through different channels of your body as you're moving. So I have not had anyone realize that or notice that since I was doing my training. So oh, nice. awesome, kudos Yay. to you. <laughs> Thank you, good teacher, that's why. <laughs> good, glad, I'm glad to help. I'm glad I'm a good teacher. Uh, How are you doing? Hi. You look much better than two weeks ago. <laughs> I feel much better than two weeks ago. Thank you. Yes. I'm glad. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Doing a lot of uh, my own Qigong and Reiki and other healing arts to keep myself going. So I had a little bit of a bump in my health, but I'm much better now. The snow keep doesn't... it up because I really look forward to your class. Oh, good. Good. I'm glad. And you can always do those things in a chair, just like we did a few weeks ago. It does change the chi just a wee bit, but not much. So if you wanna practice at home every once in a while on a chair, go ahead and do so. But I'm glad you're able to come yeah, to these unfortunately, classes. Unfortunately, I, I cannot say that I feel the chi, but 
I, That's I okay. It comes with practice and time. Okay, Everyone's going to feel it differently as well. Some people physically feel it. Some people, it's more of a vision um, or a visualization through their body. And some, it's more like a gut knowing. Um, some even hear it. So everyone is going to be different. Every day is going to be different. There may be a moment where you're like, oh, yeah, I really feel it. And then the next time you're like, oh, man, I don't. But that's okay. <laughs> Anyone else have any comments or questions about our practices? All right. It doesn't seem like anybody else has any other comments or questions, which is fine. Do you have any more recordings that uh, have gone out um, so uh, that we can watch? We'll, uh, we'll have... We'll have new ones probably coming out this week. Um, we've just, I was focusing on my meditation series. So I was doing those for another class that I was doing. Um, but we're, uh, we're in the process of editing those and cleaning up the sound so that you don't hear the little things that you're not aware of when you're watching it on Zoom because you're going over it live. But we, we polish it, we clean it up before we put it up there. <laughs> So make it nice and sparkly and new. <laughs> You're welcome. So we'll try to get some of those out this, this week. We try to do at least one a week, which is either Tai Chi or the chair yoga, sometimes a meditation. And soon energy work and energy healing practices are also gonna be up there. So coming soon. Alrighty. Well, I hope all of you have a lovely day and enjoy the snow if you can. Um, if you're a snow lover, I love snow. I am so glad that we got as much snow as we, we did. I was building a snow dog uh, from last weekend's snow, the weekend before, and it was about a almost a four foot high dog sitting there. And with all the snow that has fallen this past weekend, um, there's no dog, <laughs> which is fine for me. I love it. Uh, I love the snow, more the merrier, but uh, I know not everybody loves the snow as much. So I hope all of you can find balance in it in whatever way you can. Have a great day and the rest of your week. Bye.